In 2003, my husband and I were like many young urban professionals. We were stressed out and haunted by the idea that humanity was rushing towards self-destruction. We were living in Toronto with two young kids under the age of two. And as many of you know, there's nothing quite like having children to bring the world's problems into clear focus. Like many mighty parents, I worried for their future. I could manage to ensure that they got enough sleep, ate their vegetables, and read lots of books, but how could I protect them from a world that might become so polluted that it would be uninhabitable? The news was filled with alarming stories about climate change, hurricanes, forest fires, glaciers melting, ocean acidification, and carbon. The vast amounts of carbon we were releasing into our atmosphere, not to mention the huge rise in diet-related diseases and cancer. At the same time, every scientific report coming out about climate change in our future had the same basic conclusion. <laughs> Somebody's got to say it. <laughs> We're in serious trouble. And every year, the findings become more dire and irreversible. For a while, I tried pretending that it wasn't happening. But expecting other people to solve these problems while we carried on with our normal lives wasn't an option. We owed it to our kids to at least try. So after much discussion, we concluded that the way we grow our food was actually the common denominator in many of the biggest challenges that we were facing. So we did something radical. No, we did something crazy. We bought a farm and decided to set out to prove that you could grow food the right way. This farm. We address climate change head on by building a sustainable farm employing practices that put as much carbon back in the soil as re we released. This meant that we farmed organically, not using any chemical fertilizers or pesticides. We did almost everything by hand, and we put in solar panels to offset our electricity use. We grew thousands and thousands of pounds of really beautiful, nutritious, organic produce every year. So fast forward 12 years, and things look pretty good on our farm. Our farm is a place that people gather to learn about food and build community. We're profitable, we sell our produce to some of the best chefs in the country, and we have a fiercely loyal customer base. Both my husband and I work full-time on the farm, and we have time in the off-season to travel and enjoy life. And our kids have had an amazing life, a childhood on the farm, and they've grown into awesome young adults. My life as a farmer is challenging and meaningful and good. But when I look away from the farm and out into the world, it's a different story. We're still in trouble. The world continues to hurtle towards self-destruction and the problems have only gotten worse. We've realis realized that sustainability is no longer enough. Sustaining the status quo is not an option when the status quo is going down the toilet. Here are three simple stats that illustrate what I'm talking about. If we were to stop 100% of global carbon emissions today, like right now, it would take 200 years for the CO2 in the atmosphere to return to the levels that we had in 1970. 200 years. Over 30% of global farmland has become desertified, turned from arable farmland into desert through poor farming practices. This is enough land to feed 1.4 billion people. And the UN estimates with current farming practices, we have on average less than 60 harvests left because before the rest of our farmland becomes severely degraded or destroyed. Well, 57, actually, that report came out three years ago. We've simply passed the point where sustainability can save us, for real. Okay, so I had planned to, to give an inspirational TED Talk, and I can clearly see that it's not working out that way. 
I can see that many of you are ready to crawl under your seats. And I felt exactly the same way until I began to see this differently. There is a small but growing movement of farmers, researchers, and activists who've realized there's a different path, a way of farming that can not only stop, but can reverse the big, scary trends that threaten to make our planet uninhabitable, a way of growing food that goes beyond sustainable. We call it regenerative agriculture. So what is regenerative agriculture? The easiest way to understand it is this. There's too much carbon in our atmosphere and not enough in the soil. Pretty simple, right? So the first step is that we have to stop thinking about carbon as the problem. Carbon is a resource. It's essential for all life on the planet and especially for growing healthy plants. The problem is how the carbon is distributed. Excess carbon in our atmosphere is causing our planet to warm. Not enough carbon in the soil is leading to poor crop yields, erosion, and des desertification. This imbalance is causing climate change. So all we need to do is move the carbon from the air to the soil. So how do we do that? The answer is right under our feet. It turns out that soil is teeming with an abundance of life. There are countless species of fungi, bacteria, protozoa, insects, and animals that all live in the soil. This soil microbiota is essential for the growth of healthy plants. All food crops and just about every other plant that scientists have studied survive only through a complex symbiosis with the creatures that are in the soil. The creatures in the soil gather the nutrients from the air and the land and feed them to the growing plants. The plants return the favor by feeding sugar to the soil microbiota. Sugar it contains carbon, which is made from CO2 in the atmosphere during photosynthesis. So when the plants grow, they are continually pumping carbon into the soil to feed their microscopic helpers. When the plants die, they decompose and their nutrients are recycled. Over time, the carbon in the soil increases, leading to a positive cycle of increasing fertility, increased soil life, and more vigorous plant growth, all the while drawing carbon down out of the atmosphere. But with the rise in industrial chemical agriculture over the past 60 years or so, we've broken this cycle. Common farming practices such as planting big monocrops, the use of toxic pesticides, and continually plowing and tilling the soil all kill soil life and destroy soil organic matter. On average, we have lost over 50% of the carbon out of our agricultural soils worldwide. For more than half a century, carbon has been flowing in the wrong direction, from our soils to the atmosphere with dire consequences for both. Regenerative farming is all about reversing that trend. With regenerative farming, we start moving carbon in the right direction, moving it down instead of up. And the good news is that farming techniques that store carbon in the soil are cheap and low-tech, and they work. Let me tell you about some of the regenerative farming practices we use on our farm to protect our soil. The first is really simple. We never put anything on our land that will kill soil life. No chemical fertilizers, no pesticides. In order to protect our salad greens from bugs, we cover them with nets. We don't plant monocultures. We grow a wide diversity of vegetables, and we mix them up all together. The greater the diversity of plants we have growing, the greater the diversity of life in the soil, and the more carbon we can store. Now, very importantly, we try to never leave our soil bare. So in the fall, after we harvest our vegetables, we plant winter rye and hairy vetch to cover the soil and feed the soil life over the winter. And we plant cover crops. These are crops that we plant not to harvest, but to feed the soil life and store carbon. We grow diverse cocktail crops of peas, 
oats, sunflowers, and these crazy daikon radishes that can put a taproot six feet down into the subsoil to retrieve nutrients. These plants and their microscopic helpers in the soil, they fix nitrogen, store water, prevent erosion, and sequester tons and tons of atmospheric carbon. But the most important step and the most difficult for us is to reduce the amount that we till the land. There's nothing like tillage to kill soil life and release CO2. The goal in both organic and conventional agriculture is no till. But that's really hard to do when you're growing little salad greens that only take three weeks from planting to harvest. We would till, then plant, then till again after harvesting, replant, harvest, and till again. We'd sometimes till our soil 10 times in a single season. And I really hope there aren't any farmers in the room because it's really embarrassing to admit that. We were canceling out many of the other efforts we were making to sto store carbon in our soil. That is until we heard about a really cool solution and really low tech. We began experimenting with huge tarps. So instead of tilling, we would take a big tarp and after we harvest our salad greens, we would lay the tarp down and that tarp would kill, like block out the sunlight, kill the weeds, and then heat up the soil, which stimulated the soil life to break down the dead plants. After two weeks, a bed of our harvested salad greens would go from this to that. We were able to plant the next crop directly into the undisturbed soil. So we did this, we used this method hoping that after a couple of years, we would see an increase in the amount of carbon or soil organic matter in our soil. But what we didn't expect was the immediate and dramatic benefit to the plants that we were growing. In this field here, we used a tarp that was too short. So we tilled the bit at the end there. Then we pulled up the tarp and we planted spinach. And then after about a week or so, we noticed something really strange. The spinach that was growing in the undisturbed soil, where it had been tarped, germinated better, grew faster, and didn't have any weeds to compete with. You can clearly see where the outline of the tarp was. This happened every time we planted into undisturbed soil. Better germination, faster growth, and no weeds. So for us, that meant less labor, higher yields, and more profit. Every time we planted our salad greens into undisturbed soil, they were ready for harvest more than a week earlier than the same salad greens we had planted into soil that had been tilled. So next year, we're hoping to move our whole farm to no-till. And the no-till revolution is catching on with, with organic and conventional farmers alike. Regenerative farming techniques have huge benefits for our environment and climate, but they also pay big dividends to farmers. New research is showing that the more carbon you have in your soil, the more money you make. So before you turn off your news feeds and crawl under your bed, let me, let me give you this bit of good news. During the Paris Climate Summit in 2015, research was released that showed if we can increase the amount of carbon we have stored in our soils around the world by just 0.4% per year, just four one thousandths, we could absorb all of the excess carbon we currently emit. All of it. If we can do better than 0.4% or begin reducing our emissions, we can significantly start decreasing the amount of CO2 in our atmosphere today. We don't need to wait 200 years. We can do it now. So I'm going to give you guys three things that you can do that can help make this happen. The first is to support regenerative farmers. Talk to the vendors in your farmer's market and ask them if they're farming carbon. Ask them what they're doing to protect their soil. I can tell you as a farmer, if there is a market, if there is demand for regenerative food, farmers are going to grow it. If you can't get to a farmer's market, buy certified organic. Many of these regenerative techniques are already mandatory for organic farmers. 
The second thing is to adopt a carbon diet. More vegetables, less meat. It's better for you and the planet. If you do eat meat, it's vitally important to eat grass-fed and organic. Animals raised in the right way have a big role to play in regenerative agriculture and building healthy soil. But the way that we currently farm meat is the single biggest contributor to global carbon emissions, bigger even than transportation. Now, these first two are about personal choice, but personal choice is only going to get us so far. In order to get the kind of radical, transformative change that is necessary, we need to organize and get political. Carbon is our most valuable global resource. We need to demand a carbon tax and then take the money that that car carbon tax generates and support regenerative projects, including regenerative farming. We need to pay farmers to sequester carbon. Measuring soil carbon is cheap and easy, and there's a global army of farmers already in place. If we set clear benchmarks and offer real incentives, farmers will begin storing carbon tomorrow. We already pay all sorts of subsidies to support, promote the wrong kind of agriculture. We need to start paying farmers to move carbon from the air to their soil. So it's time to stop wringing our hands and waiting for the world to end. We all have a role to play. It's not somebody else's responsibility. The time for sustainability is past. We can regenerate. Let's eat our way out of this mess. Thank you.